ladies and gentlemen, this next bout of the evening is scheduled in the 130 pound catch weight division. And at this time, I need you to welcome to the cage, today, Garcia. Tide Garcia. That is the name that has gone throughout this family for years. She is the third Tide Garcia. A you grandma look, and an auntie. Oh, we look Old good. name, Tade Garcia. Yes. And when you speak of this young lady, she has an interesting story. Because she was able to finally get into a bully. That was great. And now she is an MMA fighter. What about that? What a story. I mean, Garcia is fighting at Aguera's House of Warriors out of Alvin, Texas. And usually fly to the, in the flyway division uh, here, but you know they had a, a little agreement and now fighting at catchweight at 130. So it should be exciting. You know, you see her and she looks like a little young lady who can't eat. But she was telling us she's got some big eating habits. What did she tell us? She had some muffins she had to do right after the weigh-in. She had, she had about <laughs> 10 muffins to eat, she said. Uh, you know, big, she said her hobbies, we asked her what her hobbies were other than MMA, and she said she's a foodie and she loves to eat. So, yes, that's uh, that's one of her hobbies. She doesn't look like it, though. This is a new, this is a new generation. Again, speaking about the new generation, it just keeps coming up because that's what we have here. Uh, and, and this is a prime example. Garcia, you know, 20 years old. She's, this is her third professional fight. and in the XFC here. I mean, what an honor. It's just like being, fighting here, I, again, I, it, it, it's, I feel jealous, but in a good way, because I, you know, I also love seeing uh, platforms like this for young talent like, like Garcia and, and Goldie. Let's go to Ryan Nico. And now making her way to the red corner, make some noise for Hannah Goldie. Hannah Goldie is no stranger to the MMA. She has been at the UFC, and now she looks at this as a redemption tour to come back and say, Hannah's not done. That's right. You know, she she's uh, this is she's using. She says she's never been more. I mean, she hasn't been as relaxed in a fight for a long time she doesn't remember she's she's happy this is her hometown she's has her her child here her child and and, and her uh, her ex-husband supporting her so she's she's in good spirits right now she spoke so highly about the mere fact that her son is here and how she and her ex have worked so hard together to make sure that even though things didn't work out for them they will always work out for her son and I love that especially when you think of a family and how important it is just want to say a special hello to Grandmaster Greg Mayo of Cleveland, Ohio, a man who has taught me so much about mixed martial arts. He is, of course, a Hall of Famer. But when you speak of this young lady, she's ready. She's ready. She, you know, comes from Fusion X Performance. Uh, here, this is their hometown with Julian Williams as our head coach, uh, who's, you know, trains a lot of top fighters in the sport. So uh, I'm sure she's well prepared and. He said, ready to go at catch weight at 130. And I think these, this fight is going to start out. I mean, it, like I said, fireworks. Ryan Nico with the introductions. Fight fans, this cage match is scheduled in a 130 pound catch weight division. Our three judges scoring the bout cage side Jason Granier, Jed O'Connor, and Michael Tate. Our third man in charge of the action, David Baggett. And now we introduce our fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, she enters the ring with two victories, only one defeat. At age 20, she stands five feet, five inches tall. She scaled 129.4 pounds, representing Alvin, Texas. Here is. Tide Garcia. And now, fighting out of the red corner. She is a veteran of 10 professional MMA battles, six victories. She is 31 years old and stands at five feet, four inches tall. She weighs 128.6 pounds, representing Orlando, Florida. Here is Hannah 
24K Goldie. And our third man in the ring, David Baggett, gives further instruction. There you got Hannah Goldie going up against right, Todd A. Garcia. In the back, got any questions? Any questions? Touch glove. All right, let's hook them up. Both of these young ladies are ready. And when you look at it, six and four, two and one, you know that this is going to be a competitive battle. Throw the records out of the book. All I can tell you is that Ty Day is ready. And at 65, with a reach advantage of five inches, this could be a fight for her. Absolutely, I, I agree, Ryan, Ronnie. I'm telling you, this fight's gonna start quick. And these ladies didn't wait. One thing we can say is that Goldie is in magnificent shape. But I have to ask you, just on the eye test alone, when we consider the weigh-in, does it appear that she was able to rehydrate and get even more pounds Absolutely. in this fight? Absolutely, Ronnie. I mean, you could see the, the, the weight difference uh, there. I mean, Hannah, you know, is really muscular. But we'll see how, how that affects her car cardio, because that can also affect your, your cardio. Are you impressed with the defense that Tade Garcia is trying to apply? Yes. With her back to the cage. Yes, what she needs to do here is circle and, and, and uh, she needs to circle so that she gets out of that position because Goldie seems, Goldie seems very comfortable here with the good head positioning here, landing those knees. Yep. You hear Garcia's corner saying circle. And she's trying, but uh, Goldie's pressure. Goldie may have the pressure, but both women are exerting plenty of energy here. It doesn't look like there's much. But when you're tying someone up for this length of time, it can have some ill effects. Absolutely. This uh, for Goldie. This you know, trying to hold somebody down like that and control somebody uses a lot of energy. And, and like I said, if you, you, she's very muscular, so she's using a lot, a lot of energy here. Nice knee from Goldie. So what Goldie can even do here is look for the takedown. Is she trying to preserve energy because she's gained oh, nice elbow. some weight? Yeah, that elbow was nice to come out of, but Tide is still there. Tide with the jab, trying to move in, the left and the right. But another takedown, this time by Goldie. And an opportunity for a little ground and pound. He is falling into Garcia's guard. See what nice ground and pound. Garcia, what she's looking for here. She you know she mentioned you know, Garcia said wherever the fight goes she's comfortable so I feel like here she should try she should try to look for, for getting back up. This is a very good camera angle of what we are seeing and of course the attempts of the ground and pound this time by Goldie. Yes, Goldie having really good base here, connecting with some good ground and pound. She, Garcia needs to be careful there. She has, could go for a heel hook, Hannah. She, Hannah. she has to be careful because of what happened earlier tonight before we went on live, how a fight was stopped because limited ground and pound, what we saw, but they stopped it here, the commission did. Right, good posturing from Hannah here throwing some ground and pound. She looks like she has really good base, really strong position. We're here in round number one of this three round contest between these two winners, Goldie and Garcia. Nice. We're coming up to a minute left to go here in round number one. Looking, to, looking for that arm, Tidy. Garcia looking for that arm, but really good defense from, from Goldie. If we're talking about the domination 
and the positive play here in round number one, it's all Goldie as she grounds and pounds, or at least attempts to do so in a positive way. Yes, yeah, she's controlling. She's controlling her really well here. She's looking for the armbar here, Goldie, in the last seconds of the fight. Let's see if she can secure that. So, looking for transition for, to the triangle here. Nice transition here, but uh, Garcia has her arm in. But now she's going into like Omoplata. Could be a straight arm bar here with this view. Oh, straight arm bar. Nice transitions. Would be enough time. Let's see. Not enough time. Saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. See some young fans here. All about Tide, the gorilla. So I hear the coach saying she needs to get more, she needs to get busier. She's te he's telling Garcia, he needs to get, she needs to get busier, which I, I, I agree. One thing that I think in reference to Tide, how she can turn this fight around, it's gonna happen with her striking because Hannah is not moving very much. Her head is very straight. And if she goes ahead and takes advantage of that, she could end up having round two as her friend. Yes, and Hannah looks so much, she just, so much stronger. She looks like she's controlling her. Once it goes to the ground, I don't, I don't see Garcia being able to do anything. So I agree with you, Ronnie. I think that she should keep that, this fight standing. It's gonna be interesting to see how it all ends up. This is, of course, Lakeland, Florida. You are watching the XFC, the place to be here at the RP Funding Center. Getting ready for round number two. Let's see exactly what happens if we have a rejuvenated young Ty Day Garcia, who by most accounts lost round number one. Nice high kick from, from Hannah. Nice one-two from Garcia. She has to take advantage of the only advantage that she has right now in this fight. Remember, there is a reach advantage, and it's all for Tide. Nice back and forth with those low kicks, both ladies. Another low kick from Garcia. Very little head movement right now by Golden. Right, and I, you know, I feel Garcia like she's felt everything she needed to feel in the first round. I feel like now she can, she can, you know, attack more and, and feel more comfortable, knowing that she felt the, you know, Hannah's power and what she can do. Nice. My back fist that missed, but she's trying to become more aggressive, standing up, and that's what we have with the young lady in the all-black attire. Yeah, Hannah, you know, Hannah feels really comfortable with this position, looking to to take Garcia down. Good body control here. Yeah, this is a this is a really frustrating position and good takedown from Hannah. Super, you know, looks super smooth. What would be your strategy right now? Or what would you be doing or what would you be telling your fighter to do if they were in that position that Hannah currently holds? Well, you know, Hannah, she's, she's doing a really good job. And, and right now you could see Garcia trying to defend and she needs to, she needs to watch out. What Garcia needs to do is try to scoot out. And oh, that ground and pound is coming and yeah. she's becoming extremely aggressive and it's almost getting to the point that she has nowhere to go. Great elbows, great ground and pound from Hannah. She has a high mount here. She can, you know, attack the, the, the triangle for mount. She can attack the arm bar. I mean, you know, she could finish the fight here if she if she wanted to. If I was I was in the corner of Hannah, I would say rain, ground and pound. So I must ask, she talked to you and she talked about her future and what this opportunity means in the XFC. We're seeing her demonstrate this because she is doing it with a ferocious approach that says, I am not done yet. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. And you see Garcia, you know, she is doing her best as well. Uh, what Garcia needs to do here is use that cage to try, to try to get up, try to get out of this position. It's a really hard position to get out of the mount, especially with someone as strong as, as, as Hannah. She's, she has her base really low. Um, she has to hit those scapes. 
And you're you're going to have to, you know, uh, take some punches here to get out of this position. But, you know, Hannah has a lot of pressure here on the mount position. You know, high arms here. She can finish with strain arm bar or, you know, she she can finish even with with ground pound, with ground and pound. She is getting instructions from her corner and has very little she can do. And I'm talking of Tide Garcia. Yeah, and like I said, Hannah looks so strong here. She has a really good base. She's low in that mound position. Looks like she's, you know, Garcia's bleeding out of her nose from those elbows or that ground and pound that Hannah's been raining down on her. Hannah here looking for that arm triangle. Beautiful, good composure here from Hannah. Oh, this could be this could be the, the, the end of the fight. I mean, we still have a minute left, but she's looking for the arm triangle here. Beautiful. Beautiful from Hannah. The more pressure applied here, there could be a tap out coming our way. And no, Garcia gets out of that. Great work. She's trying, she's trying using the cage, but it's it's hard because Hannah has a, a good low base. And the accumulation of punches, you can see the blood starting to spew from the face of Garcia. Yeah, there's nothing Garcia can do now. Uh, you know, she, I think she's, right now it's just defense and here Hannah's going for the arm bar, which is really tight here. A really tight arm bar. Oh, wow, Garcia gets out of that. And saved by the bell again. Oh, wow, 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 she tapped out. The referee it saw was, it. Wow, and I thought it was saved by the bell. I thought she was gonna be saved by the bell because I thought she was gonna pull that elbow out, but wow, what a, what a, what a victory for Hannah. Wow. Hannah did her thing, strength over matter and technique, and she is calling for one young man to join her, and that's her son. A victory for him to see, but a victory for her. Tossed aside by the UFC, embraced by the XFC. She says, this is my second journey to a championship destiny, and it could be all for her. And now she awaits her son as they pick up, and they have that moment that she's been wanting to have with him for quite some time, that he can enjoy it beautiful. at his age. So beautiful, that's great. And for, for Hannah, I mean, this is, this is an important fight. This is a huge fight for her. This victory, it's breaking that cycle, you know, that she had. And, and it's just such a great moment for her. Congratulations to her. It has been one of those nights where dreams do come true. Promises are out. But now let's get up to Ryan Nico, who has the final word on the winner tonight. All right, fight fans, let's clap it up for both warriors for entering the cage this evening. And at this time, our referee in charge, Mr. Larry Folsom, calls the bout to a halt at four minutes and 58 seconds in round number two. Your winner by armbar submission, Hannah, 24 k Cody. There it is, she's a winner by submission by tap up. A new record is now seven and four. And Johnny LaCuasso is standing by to talk to the winner as she has her son. You showed a little bit of everything. You dominated control time, precise strikes, and of course, the submission victory. And this little man right next by your side, exactly what you wanted. Honestly, my goal tonight was just to show that I'm well-rounded and I just wanted to put it together tonight. It's been really hard for me to do that in the UFC and I've said over and over again, I'm grateful for being released so that I could get better and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get better, I'm gonna keep getting better.